welcome to my channel. Well, some of you have asked about the history of, uh, you know, a clasp knife and what is a clasp knife. And I'm no historian or anything like that, but um, in traditional knives, I, I go with this guy a lot of times. It's not easy to find his information because I, that's why I got all these little tabs up here. Because he'll talk about something like a clasp knife, and it'll be in one category, and you think, okay, that, that's it about clasp knives. And then it'll be in another category, in the subcategory. And uh, from what I can gather, the term clasp knife could be um, damn near anything. A folding knife, basically, you know, with one or multi-blades. And... Uh, a word about classification, all right? You know, so if you look at this bug and you say, all right, what is that? Some people would say it's a grasshopper. Some people would say it's a cricket. Some people would say it's a locust. You know, there's all these different terms. And we, and we have these terms because what we're trying to do is we're trying to separate it. Now, the people that actually classify bugs, you know, they might call this, you know, they use Latin terms, specific, you know, uh, terms for it, so it would be like Cricketus giganticus or something, you know. And he's the wrong color for a cricket. Believe me, I know what crickets uh, look like because I worked at Radco at night in Texas in the summer. It was an un uh, air conditioned, unmodified warehouse, you know. So um, one of the advantages of working at night was to open up the doors and you know let air come through. But you also let bugs in, you know, fluorescent lights and factory. And they would get into everything. So, man, we'd have a cricket invasion. They, they'd, sometimes there'd just be swarms of them in there getting all over everything. But anyways, so it's kind of a vague term, just like a jackknife. What's a jackknife? And, you know, there's all this other stuff. But I'll show also on... In researching, I went through Google and everything else and was researching class knives. And uh, the Museum of, of Wales has a very good uh, World War I multi-tool type of knife that they call a class knife. It was pretty cool. All right, but see, in here, he goes curved, regular, or class jacks, you know. And they show, oh, this thing's going to bounce around. But they show a bunch of different stuff over here. And then he gets, um, you go way back here, chapters away, and he gets into, this is what I use as the definition, you know, to kind of narrow it down to get it to what we would think of it. And I'll just read it to you here. It says, uh, Got to read it through the monitor so we'll know it's in focus. The first class knives were made from the ends of cow, goat, or sheep horns. So you have that curved or slotted thing. So for them, a, a class knife in some pictures is like a Naha, you know, or uh, the cold steel kudu would be considered a class knife, you know. Um, anyways. Uh, that were slotted to contain a blade. The blade was shaped to fit the natural curve of the horn so that the tip of the horn covered the point of the blade. Earlier styles of clasp knife they used in the United States are shown in Ford and Exotic. So, Levine's book is part uh, outdated, you know, price guide and everything, but also part uh, classification. It helped narrow stuff down sometimes. And for a clasp knife, you know, I tend to think of them more as like a big, a big uh, kind of folding hunter. Now, see, here's a folding hunter, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call this guy a clasp knife, right? I mean, it's, it's like the Buck 110, but I wouldn't call this a clasp knife. But technically, it is a clasp knife. You know, it's one blade folds in there. You know, it has some kind of locking system. But what I look at it more is like, it's, it's gonna have that kind of curve. And it's going to have a belly in it. Now, the Nahas could be, you know, like the Joker. Uh, let me get that one that... i got to disconnect my mic and pause everything. All right, I found it. This guy. See how that, you know, horn 
curve shape and everything. Then it has this nice clip point on it. But it doesn't have a super huge belly on it. But it, I mean, it's this would be considered a a clasp knife according to the definitions I've read in there. But so so when I talk about clasp knives, I'm talking more about these these kind of guys. You know, um, that's what separates them. You know, because a Barlow knife could be considered a clasp knife just because the handle the blade folds into the handle uh it doesn't have that curved shape of a horn but some you know like i said some of these definitions are pretty broad on things you know like what's a jackknife and you know it's a double-ended jackknife or whatever and it, it pops up a lot in traditional knife classifications kind of like a that's that's I think that's one thing that might put some people off from uh traditional knives you know is uh people might correct them you know that's not a that's not a French tickler that's a fish knife you know or that's not this or this or that and um it's it's kind of like word correctness and everything you know as long as you know what the people are talking about that's that's why we have words to narrow things down you don't want something to say well what kind of knife is that what's well, a pocket knife well yeah duh you know but what kind of pocket knife you know there's lots of pocket knives be more specific and uh, with this it's like i said it's kind of an old-fashioned type of thing because it's a big blade, but it doesn't have a lock. Well, if you've got a strong enough back on them, and they lock in well, and you've got a place to put your hand, which you, your finger, which you do, uh, there's nothing wrong with the non-locking blade. People get scared of it, so ah, it's going to cut me and everything. Well, you, you didn't know how to handle it properly, obviously. And even if you know how to handle a knife properly, you're still going to get yourself cut. <laughs> Believe me. You know, you're going to cut yourself. Uh, we try to minimize it and try to be safe. But if that's your whole worry about, you know, not enjoying a clasp knife, it's too heavy, it's, it doesn't have a lock on it and everything. Okay, you know, keep your little lightweight, air light, whatever it is you're carrying around, you know, and be happy with it. That's fine, you know, I, I'm not a... I'm not going to judge you on, on what you carry as a knife. I'm just saying, as far as opportunities and options, don't let your previous bias on something prevent you from buying a, a or experiencing a knife if you feel like you reached a stale point in knife land or whatever, you know, and everything's all the same and it's all it's probably because you've narrowed down your selection to i only like this type of knife it's got to have this type of opening mechanism it's got to have this type of steel you know and the more you're and it's understandable if you're trying to narrow it down to a knife that you want to use but as far as like a knife that's useful that other people can use or maybe you know like i mean i don't i don't like I don't have a garden. What do I need this for? You might find that this is pretty good for open packages too. It puts all that down to a point. Your rest of it here is useful, but you got this little point here that you can just like a claw, you know. Um, and that's where a lot of this comes into too, is because um, knives are around, you know before christ era you know so it was for jesus if you believe in that so knives have been around a long time and um folding knives pocket knives and stuff like that it's it's nothing super new but it would like to be known as like you know the the and it and in many ways it is the kind of the grandfather of uh getting pocket knives back into people's pockets because before they had just had you know, the traditional, you know, the traditional knives, it's not something that's a jumbo stockman, but, you know, they just had these things, and people were kind of bored with that, and you know, they didn't have a pocket clip, you know, it just got left behind, unless you were working on a farm or something, but uh, once they once they started doing the, the belt sheath and started beefing up a regular design, it, it 
it had uh, it had a lot to do with it. But Buck didn't invent the folding, you know, locking knife. They didn't, you know. They just they were just popular about it. I like Buck. I'm I'm not a Buck basher, <laughs> Buck basher. But uh, yeah, so it it kind of opens a can of worms when you when you go to research things and and look at stuff, you know. Unless you know everything about it, which most people don't. Um, and the ones that do, you kind of be suspect of. Like that one hater that got on there. I've researched everything there is to know about buoy knives and everything. And I know that this cross guard was never designed wrong. You know, I mean, you might have researched, but you overlooked that fact. Or you had some kind of bias going on because... Um, that was used that way. It was practiced. They practiced it in their little buoy schools and stuff, you know. They had little knife fighting schools going on when buoy knives were out, you know, teaching people more along the lines of fencing and stuff, you know. But still, um, you don't know everything you think you know about stuff, you know. If, if, you, if somebody comes up to you and says, I know everything there is to know, and then you look at their profile, and it's some fat guy in a garage you know, and his main thing is about chainsaws, oh, well, you know, don't let everything, don't judge a book by its cover, he may be an academic, but it looks like he's into drinking a lot, and uh, talking, that's what I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of knives out there, there's a lot of knife people, and there's a lot of knife opinions, I try to separate opinion and fact, you know, like, when I'm researching something about the history of Bowie knives, I said, you know, in, in the thing when I was talking about, that this cross guard, besides protecting your hand, you know, from another blade coming at you and cutting your hand, can actually be used to pivot and um, trap a blade. But uh, we've already beat that dead horse, you know, to the ground because it's, uh, it's all in how um, you handled differences of opinions you know somebody else has got an opinion that it was never used that way it's all how you phrase it you know if you start saying call somebody a mall ninja and stuff because you know they're spreading useless information well what are you mister you know let's see your research let's see your references you know give us some documentation how many years how many hours have you studied what books have you read authors you know come on Educate us. Don't insult. Educate. You know, if you can't educate, then you're just an opinion. You're just a rant. you could be a troll, a bot. I could be arguing with a three-year-old. Is what it what it gets down to. So and that's all I know. Is that's what I use usually if I'm trying to figure out something. I want to see what Levine had to say, and then look at the different examples. Let's break his book back out because part of it is the pictures that I like in it. You know. Because you're looking at clasp knives and stuff, and you're, going, oh, you know, what's, what's a pen knife, you know, what's a whittler? But uh, yeah, even the sodbuster, like some of these, these are like considered a sailor's knife, but they're also considered a clasp knife, you know. <clears throat> so. I guess it's whatever you want to call it, but if you want people to understand what you were talking about, you know, and, and get down to more specifics and stuff, then you're going to have to narrow it down to um, what is a class knife. And a lot of times it's, it's um, in this case, it's what the uh, manufacturer calls it. You know, the manufacturer calls this a class knife, so bam, bingo. This is a class knife. This is what it, this is their version of it. This is not all class knife. Case makes a class knife. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, ones made similar to this. You know, but there you go. I hope you got something out of that other than my mini ramble on a past troll that. Uh, came along and was the authority on Bowie knives. Like I said, I, I love uh, learning things that I don't know, 
you know, it's just all how you present your information. If you don't present any information and all you're presenting is insults, then, uh, nah, we're not going to have a conversation. <laughs> I know the difference between abusive people and people that, you know, I, I know the difference. So, yeah, if, if no information comes along with that but just insults, then, yeah, there's an on-off switch called, hey... We don't need your type, do we? This guy, he, I realized he does. Somebody said he had a duck bill face, and he does. He has a duck bill face. Goofy he doesn't have those funny lips like that, so. Anyway, and this guy, yes, would be a good spokesman for YKM. Oh, I got stuck on his. I'm going to have to trim his little fuzzy butt here because uh, I got poked by that little tag that they left in him when they darted him tranquilized him those tranquilizer dart when they captured the dinosaur so there you go thanks for watching and have a nice day